Good morning. Welcome to Victoria's Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. This week we have started a new study on pride and humility. And yesterday we stopped on the point that we are talking about is the ugliness and deadliness of pride. The ugliness and deadliness of pride. And we see that pride is the root of all sin and evil. And pride was the very first sin. Pride was the cause for the fall of Satan or as he was called Lucifer before he sinned. And we read yesterday Isaiah 14 verses 12 through 15. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will set, sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Notice all the I wills. And especially the last one, I will make myself. You know, a lot of people have that attitude. Even if you don't say it, it's the independent attitude. I will make myself. That is sin because it's pride. Verse 15 says, but you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. Independence from God and self-dependence is sin because self-dependence is pride. Independence from God, self-dependence is pride. And then yesterday we ended by starting to read in Genesis chapter 3. So let's go back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. And it says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Verse four, you will not surely die. The serpent said to the woman right there. We see pride because pride is denying what God says or has said. Pride is denying what God says or what God has said. He denied directly what God said was true. He denied it was true. You will not surely die, he said. Verse 5. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now let me point out something to you here. You may have heard me say this before, but most people have not seen it. When he said, you will be Like God. He was causing her to forget something very important. She was already like God. Do you remember Genesis 1 26? Genesis 1 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness in our image in our likeness in our image in our likeness you need to think on that you need to ponder that think about that through the day today you are made in God's image in God's likeness she was already like God in God's likeness You see, Satan, that's what Satan wanted. 
Do you remember Isaiah 14 that we just read? Look at verse 14, Isaiah 14, 14. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like, like, like the most high. You see, Satan was one of the archangels. He was not in the image of God. He was not created to be like God. He was an angel. But when God made man, God chose to make man in his own likeness. Now, if you haven't heard this teaching, it's called the story of the glory. It was one of the very first teachings on this program called the story of the glory. If you'd like to listen to that series or any other series, or if you've missed any of these radio programs, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is under my name, Cherry Campbell, C-H-E-R-R-I, Campbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. And there you will find all these radio programs. They're listed under the radio broadcasts by category and by series. Also on my YouTube channel are the service messages that I have preached in the services. So you can go to YouTube and listen to them anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You need to go back and study that. It was how God created man in his own image. Genesis 1, 26 lesson. That God made us in his own image and in his own likeness. But through sin, we fell. Man fell. Adam and Eve fell. From the likeness of God. They lost it. They became sinful and they became like Satan with a sinful heart, sinful nature. They became like Satan. But if you will remember in Ephesians chapter four, Ephesians chapter four, verse 22 to 24, 22 to 24. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self. Well, that's crucifying the flesh, the sinful nature, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Verse 23, be made new in the attitudes of your minds. Now you say, but I thought I already was new. Remember, the spirit, soul, and body. You are a spirit. Your inner man, the person inside, is a spirit. You have a soul. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Mind, the thinking part. Will, the choosing, deciding part of you. Emotions, the feeling part of you. You have a soul. Mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a physical flesh body, the house for your spirit and soul. Now, according to Second Corinthians five seventeen, Second Corinthians five seventeen, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation or creature. The old has gone, the new has come. What's he talking about? Your spirit, soul, or body? Well, obviously not your body. Your body is the same body that you've always had. You didn't get a new body. Your your body isn't gone and you've got a new body. It's the same body that you've always had. Well, it's also the same soul. You've got the same mind you've always had. You didn't get a different mind when you got born again. No, what was made new? The spirit. The inner man, your spirit inside of you was reborn, born again. As first Peter one twenty three says, first Peter one twenty three, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. 
So you are born again, First Peter one twenty three, by the living word of God. What's born again? Not your body, not your mind, but your spirit. Your spirit is reborn, born again, a new creation in Christ. So that's why spiritual growth has all to do with the changing of the soul and and body nature, flesh, because being born again is instant for the spirit. For your human spirit, you are instantly born again. You are instantly a new creation in Christ. Inside your inner man is a new creation. But back to Ephesians 4, 23, be made new. So that's not something that's done yet. Be made new in the attitude of your minds. That's the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the body, I mean, the spirit, the spirit is instantly reborn, but the mind is not. The mind has to go through process of metamorphosis. Romans 12, 2. Be transformed. That is the word that we get metamorphosis from it's a transformation process it's a it's a process it's not an instantaneous action or event it's a process you have to put your mind through a process of renewal and that's what ephesians 4:23 says be made new in the attitude of your minds And then look at verse 24. This is what I was trying to get to. But I had to back up and cover the basis again. Verse 24, Ephesians 4, 24. And put on the new self created to be like God. We're back to the word like. The story of the glory series that I gave you, we traced the word like or likeness. From Genesis 126 all the way through the New Testament, Ephesians, Colossians, Hebrews, where we studied that we are now in the likeness of God. The first man, Adam, was created in the likeness of God. He was also perfect and sinless. But when he sinned, he lost his God likeness in that he became his nature became like Satan. His nature became sinful. His nature became proud. His nature became selfish, pride and selfishness. The two main characteristics of the sinful nature, pride and selfishness, his nature changed to being like Satan. Satan is Proud and selfish. And it's also a fear nature. It's a fear based nature. Satan is the spirit of fear. He's got more fear than anybody. Yeah. He tries to make you a fear, a feared. He tries to make you afraid. <laughs> he tries to make you afraid. Just remind him. He's got more fear than you do. He is the spirit of fear. He's got it all. But then he's trying to make you afraid. And fear is part of that fallen nature. There is no fear in God because there's no fear in love. Love is God's nature. So you see, the first man, Adam, lost the nature of God, love, fearlessness, faith, love, power, and a sound mind was all his. That was God's nature. He lost it. He took the nature of Satan, fear-based, tormented, and proud and selfish. Subject to death. Well, then in Christ Jesus, we regain everything that Adam lost. We're born again. We again, we then our spirit inside is reborn, taking the nature and the likeness of God in us. But then we have to change and process that change through our soul and our body 
nature and actions, responses, words, thoughts. We have to put it on. That's why in Ephesians, Paul writes in verse 22, put off your old self. Verse 24, put on the new self. That's something that you've got to do every day. That's basically crucifying the flesh, renewing the mind, thinking, learning to think the way God thinks. Put off your old self, put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness, true righteousness and holiness. So the new creation is created again like God, but we've now got to put it on daily. We've got to process it in our day, in our lives every day. So back to Genesis three. Okay. All that to get back to Genesis three and to show you that when the serpent was talking to the woman, he said, you will be like God. He was deceiving her, making her for causing her, leading her, tempting her to forget that she was made in the image and the likeness of God. So what you see is God had already given Adam and Eve, his own likeness. You got to get this. Listen carefully. Process this. Meditate on this. God had already given Adam and Eve his likeness. They forgot they had it. And therefore, through temptation of Satan, they set out to try to get it for themselves, independent of God. Now, I want you to see something. Anything and everything good, God wants you to have it. God wants you to be it if it's good. The problem is, is when you set out on your own to get it for yourself. To be it by yourself. Independence from God is pride. God wants you to have good things. God wants you to be a good, successful person in whatever field you're in. Scientist, engineering, inventor, doctor, whatever. He wants you to be good. He wants you to be the best. But pride is when... In independence, you set out to do it by yourself, independent from him. Humility is total dependence on God. Now, God had already made them like himself. He had already given them his likeness. They forgot they had it. And then through Satan's temptation, first the woman, but then the man, with her set out to get it for themselves independent from God and against what God had said. So then Genesis three, you will be like God knowing good and evil. And then verse six, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, And also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Now, sometimes people like to forget the husband was right there with her. He was not somewhere else off on the other side of the garden. He was with her the whole time. He was with her. He was with her. He ate it also. And then verse seven, then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Again, independence from God doing it for themselves. This, you know, when you try to make money on your own, 
independent from God. And of course, Christians will say, of course, God is my source. But the reality is day by day in your thoughts and actions, you're not giving God place. You're not acknowledging him. You're not, by listening to him. You're not listening to him. You're not following him. You're not following his directions. Then you're being independent and going your own way. You're in pride. And when you try to make that buck on your own, then you're in pride. But if you will be dependent on God by listening to him, yielding to him, following him every day, that is humility. That is total dependence on God. That's what we are to be doing. They made coverings for themselves. Notice it wasn't sufficient. They did it for themselves. What happened later was that God came along and God killed an animal in chapter three, verse 21, chapter three, verse 21. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and he clothed them. God has to do it for you. God has to be your source. Don't try to do things. Don't try to make that buck independent from God, but dependent on God for everything following him. That means listening. You know, the thing is there again, go back to the teaching I gave on how to hear God's voice, how to be led by the Holy Spirit. You must know how to be led by the Holy Spirit. You must know how to hear God's voice because, and first thing is you must be listening Listening every day for God. God is talking to you. Some people say, well, God just never talks to me. Yes, he does. He's talking all day long and you're not listening. You need to shut up and listen. Yes. And I'm talking, I believe by the spirit. Some of you need to shut up and listen to God and quit saying, God doesn't talk to me. God doesn't talk to me. Shut up. Yes. Listen to God. He is talking to you. Listen to him. Learn to recognize his voice. And turn off the television and other distractions and tune in like a radio tuner. Tune in to the frequency of God's voice. You have to get quiet. You have to get your spirit quiet. You have to get your mind quiet. Get your mind meditating on the Bible. Read the Bible. Read chapters in the Bible. Read scripture promises. Get your spirit quiet. Get your mind quiet and get focused on him. And listen, listen, then you can hear him. He is the still small voice and you won't hear the still small voice. If you're running a hundred miles an hour every day, so busy, 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 busy from the moment you open your eyes to the moment you close your eyes at night and you're running here and there and got to do this and got to do that. You're not giving God time and you're not listening to hear him. He's trying to speak. He is speaking. But he speaks in the still small voice. He doesn't blow a trumpet or a horn. Honk, 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 stop, slow down. Let me say something to you. No, he's going to be the very still small voice. And you must learn to listen to his small voice inside of you. You've got to learn to listen to God. Tune into the frequency of God's voice. Every day by spending that time with God, reading his word, listening to the teaching of the word like this radio program or others praying, listen, tune your ears to hear him. He's talking to you. He is. I promise you because he said he would. He is. He's talking to you. You need to listen to him. And he will give you the answers that you need for your life today and every day. Hallelujah. Well, let me just read one more scripture. We read Genesis 3, 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. Let me read to you real quick. First John two sixteen. First John two sixteen. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust 
of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but of the world. Now, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is exactly what she saw in the fruit. The woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food. That's the lust of the eyes. I mean, that's the lust of the flesh. She also saw pleasing to the eye. That's the lust of the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. That was the pride of life. All three of those were what we see. What's in first John two sixteen is an exact description of Genesis three, six. Well, I'm out of time and I want to invite you right now. If you're being blessed by this radio program, if it's encouraging you and building your faith, giving you new revelation, then I invite you to partner with us in supporting this radio program and its airtime. And you can do that by giving online on the website at victoriousfaith.co, victorious like a champion, V I C T O R I O U S. Faith, F-A-I-T-H dot C-O, C-O like Colorado, and go to the donation page to give online, or you can write to us at Victorious Faith, P.O. Box 509, East Lake, Colorado, 80614. And as always, we bless your seed in Jesus' name and command it to be fruitful and multiply. Now, join me again next week, and remember, God loves you, you're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.